episode 28. This is the Declutter Me podcast, a show about how to organize and declutter your life. And I've got your host, Shalina, here. Hi, Shrek. How's it going? All right, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. Excellent. I'm very excited about this episode. Yeah. You know, I think we're going to do a little bit of a introspective episode. Is it a retrospective? I, can't I don't know. know. It's in- I think it's introspective. Okay. But anyway, yes. we're going to go with introspective. We're going to do a little bit of an introspective episode. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, because we, you know, we've been doing tips for a little while now, uh, and granted, we do very low-level stuff in terms of just introductions to how to get started. Uh, but you know, what would be maybe some of the circumstances under which someone would really need to get someone professional to come in and look at their stuff? Like, are there certain conditions why they would need to do that? So it's great. We give tips, and uh, people listen and say, "Yes, yes, we're going to do it." But there's always that element with organizing that people procrastinate and that happens a lot um you know every everybody has even i have it occasionally that you know you go oh i'm going to do this and then you just don't do it you know or you go oh i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and that happens a lot with clearing your clutter and with getting organized you want to be organized um you know straight away but it takes time like you it didn't take you a day to get all the clutter coming into your life um say into your wardrobe or into your kitchen it will take time to clear it now if you do it yourself you could do it and spend an hour or two doing it all the time you know every day or once a week but you stop and start and even when you're doing those two hours you um you know you will um procrastinate you know you'll look on your phone you'll go make a cup of tea you'll go to the bathroom so there's you won't get on with it and do it and then you only do a little bit and get frustrated because you're not uh, clearing the clutter. So with using an organiser, you get to clear the clutter quickly. With me, you pay me to get on with the job. So I will push you. I won't let you procrastinate and, you know, go on your phone or take a break because you've booked that time with me. We're not going to waste time. We're going to get straight to the point. And I want you to clear that clutter as much as possible so that you could go back to living your day-to-day life, but in an organized manner. So that's the main reason to use an organizer. But there's various situations when you really do need an an organizer in your life. Um, A big thing um, that I do is to help people when they're moving their homes, out of their homes. Like you're moving into your nice new home. You don't want to take the clutter with you. You want to go into a home starting clutter free so what I recommend to a lot of people is that um, you book me in a few days before you're leaving and clear the clutter in the drawers so we go through say in a day we go through all the major areas so your kitchen um, get rid of all the expired food the utensils you don't use the saucepans that are broken have or burnt you know you go through the clothes that don't fit you um get rid of the magazines donate the books you know all these kind of things that you don't need to bring with you and you don't need to waste your money with the movers and packing away that are going to take up valuable storage room or space in your new house um let's get rid of it now so that's a a, a very good reason to use an organizer and that's what a lot of people do Another reason organizers are contacted a lot is uh, when people have used storage units and you pay money to use these storage units and then never go through the items. And a lot of the time you actually don't need to be using these storage items and paying a lot of money for them. Um, It's just, you know, you've gotten all the stuff, put them in a box and dumped them somewhere. And it's a waste of money. So instead of wasting that money, let an organizer come in with you go through the items and get rid of the things that you don't need anymore. And the things that you do want to keep will organize it properly in boxes so it's easy to locate when you do need to access them um, when you stop using that storage unit as well. And uh, another big thing with organizers, like, you know, there's always relatives or uh, friends who say, why are you contacting this person to come and organize you? I will help you. But there's an emotional aspect to organizing and decluttering, like, um, how have you? How many people have been in your wardrobe? Like, who goes in your wardrobe? Nobody. So that's the thing. Nobody. You know, most people don't have anybody go in their wardrobe, and if to have suddenly your family member or your friend see it, 
can be, especially if you have a lot of stuff, it can be embarrassing. With someone like me, they, I have no emotional attachment to your stuff and to you. I can look from a, an organizer's point of view, say to you what I think should stay and what should go and then organize it so it looks neat and tidy without you feeling any embarrassment. And I can help you make an un- unbiased decision on whether to keep, sell or throw away the item as well. Uh, do, you, do you find that people also sometimes need... Uh, an external person to come in because they're not able to tell a family member or a spouse or someone that they're, they've been hoarding and it's an uncomfortable conversation and they kind of want it's easier when it comes from someone external to be like you've got a lot of stuff let me help you clear it out because this person's not able to do it on their own yeah and uh, that does happen a lot and um it's happening now with a lot of elders so the children are contacting me and asking me to help to declutter the house but the problem is they don't know how to tell their parents that they've got too much stuff um, and, and and also the kids sometimes have too much stuff as well so what we do is we declutter and organize the kids room so the person who calls me says let's you know this is the situation there's too much stuff in the whole house my parents are hoarders what do we do and I'll always say let's do your room first so they can see what I do how I work and meet me and see what I do with your room And that will inspire them to book me to do the rest of the house. And that does happen. So, you know, they will suddenly and then I will talk to them privately to the parents or to the brothers and sisters and cousins or whoever. And we've got so much stuff. What do I do? And I'll go, well, look, this is what I do. I am not related to you. You know, I can help you clear this. Yeah, And you can be a little bit harsher as well. Right. Like when it comes to like actually decluttering the stuff, I mean, somebody had to tell their parents like, no, you're wrong. This has to. This has to go. This is a lot harder conversation to have because the parent or whatever the relative tends to will tend to overpower. Like you can be a bit sterner, right? Because you get to walk out the door afterwards. And I say to people, I'm like, I don't care if you yell or swear at me or whatever or cry. You know, I'm here to help you. But actually, what happens is that the family members between them will be doing the yelling and swearing and crying between themselves. Whereas with me, they're more embarrassed of doing that, so they will, you know. They'll try and be a bit more diplomatic and they'll listen because there's somebody externally saying. So it is easier in a way to say, look, this is a reason why you need to get rid of this stuff. So that's some of the reasons why um, people should hire professional organisers. Yeah, and we've, we've also referenced in previous episodes as well, right? I mean, I know this is something you do for your for your clients, but then um, this is something that also helps where it's we talk about the 90% syndrome as well, right? Sometimes you might, um, you get caught up and you might actually, like, let's say you stick it out, you've done it and you've done everything, but then that 10%, how do you get rid of this? stuff how do you dispose of it sometimes you put it in a bag and then that bag goes back in on a shelf somewhere and then it just stays sort of cycled back into the house somehow or you have second thoughts so you second guess yourself and so this way having this external person doing it a helps you because you can make a stronger decision or someone can force that on you but then also secondly can also help you get rid of some of the stuff you're in touch with different organizations and stuff that can help take the stuff away or sell it or other options like that as well which is again another angle where the Right, that would that would be another benefit. There seems to be a lot of things with parents, especially mums, who see the bags of stuff being decluttered and like to take it and go, oh, well, I'll review it and I'll give it to charity, and then they take it and put it back in the wardrobe, and that happens with a lot of families. So it does help to have someone like me go, no, 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 it's fine, I'll take it and I take it away and put it in my car and give it, for, you know, for sale or for donation. Well, yeah, I mean, we just I think we wanted to just introspect a little bit. You know, we've been giving tips for a while and we'll continue to, of course, but I wanted to, you know give people these tips as well to be like hey how do it's you know a lot of the stuff that we talk about in life today is about self-awareness and how do you how do you understand for yourself that hey you know what this is so much i can do and then this is something where i need a professional i need someone to come in and help me out um you know that can be anybody so you know as always you can find us in any podcast player you prefer we're also in some of the music streaming apps now so that's spotify and angami and so yeah you know subscribe and keep listening you can always go to declutterme.com fill in the contact form and i'll come back to you as soon as possible we'll be back next week with more tips see you then thanks bye Bye.